Video game ports. What a brilliant concept. Why make three original games in a trilogy when you can just port the first game two more times and call it a day? The Switch kind of came out at an odd time in between different generations of consoles. So because of that, they needed a lot of games to be moved from other consoles to the Nintendo Switch. Hence the reason for the ports, Hence the reason for this video. Also, thank you to this guy, Diego Linares, who actually suggested this video idea. If you have any other video topic that you want me to cover, let me know in the comments. And if not, then let's get on with this damn video. You know those ideas that sound really good on paper, but in practice, they're just as good? Yeah, that's Rocket League for you. Cars playing soccer with like moon gravity. Simple gameplay, but very fun. It's just so cool to mess around with the physics in this game to shoot epic shots and goals. And there's Mario skins this time. Finally, I can dress up my car like Samus. Been waiting years for this. Also, you're not held back by it being on Switch since there is crossplay from Switch to PC and Xbox One. So everyone's included. This game's just exciting to play. There's a certain rush that Rocket League achieves by driving up the side of the arena, precisely calculating the exact angle and speed needed of your car to hit the ball, and eventually execute this plan that ends in a colorful display of explosions. It's just a glorious experience and totally unique to this game. And I want to see this game get turned into a real sport. Dark Souls. Wait, that doesn't sound right. Dark Souls, there we go, much better. All right, no more messing around here because we are getting onto some hardcore games. One of the hardest games on this list and probably of all time. But the difficulty is what makes this game great. Learning your enemies' attack patterns to overcome and defeat them was a very rewarding experience. Something that is slowly being lost in the gaming industry as games try to appeal to larger audiences by just making them easier. This is a very refreshing game to play and get into. And it's just a really cool world to be immersed in. Since the bosses in the game are the main focus here, they really added a lot of variety in the different opponents you fight. There can be simple looking bosses, like a giant wolf who's carrying a sword in his mouth. Hmm. So where do you think Game Freak got the idea for Pokemon Sword from? Or it can be more complex designs, like whatever the hell this thing is supposed to be. You never knew what kind of boss you were going to face. And that made progressing through the game even more interesting. If you are up for a rewarding and challenging game, I would definitely say to pick this one up. So the next game on this list is a little indie game that I don't know if too many people actually know about. It's um, one where you like build stuff, one with um, cubes. Minecraft, that's the one. Yeah, it may have sold a few copies over the years. I'm sure Minecraft needs no introduction, so I thought I would introduce it. It's a game where you have the freedom to be however creative you want and build whatever you want. The possibilities are truly endless. For me, I usually just stick with how dope of a crib that I can build, but hey, to each their own. But blah, 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 I'm sure you guys know all about Minecraft. I will say that this type of game is perfect for the Switch. It's got simple graphics that literally have no downgrades on the Switch. Combine that with having gameplay that really benefits from it being on handheld. This is because Minecraft is the type of game where you might just want to grind some materials for a bit and then put it down. Or maybe you just want to work on a huge build for a little before it gets boring. And now you can do all of that with the power of Nintendo Switch. Now you're playing with power. Nothing like a good old cup of coffee. Cup of coffee. It's a cup of coffee. Cup, cup. Cuphead. The story about a guy who has a cup as his head. Cuphead. This game is like a retro shoot 'em up style game that has a heavy focus on its interesting bosses. But are you seeing this art style? It's like you've been placed right back into a Disney cartoon leg bobbin and all. This is easily this game's biggest standout feature. No game before or since has even attempted an art style even close to this. And because this game is so stylized, it literally looks just as good on Switch as it does on other consoles, even with its inferior hardware making it the perfect port for the console. Plus, it just really works as a portable game since it's focused on small boss levels that you most likely have to attempt over and over because of the difficulty. This makes it perfect for the bite-sized playstyle that you often see in handheld consoles. Now if you'll excuse me, all this cup talk has got me craving a nice cup of coffee. Yeah! 
And now we have Doom. Or, uh, Doom number two. Like, not Doom 2, but, you know, Doom 2. Companies really gotta stop rebooting the series with the same name as the original. In this action-packed shooter game, you will be returning to the depths of hell to shoot the crap out of any monster in sight. And these monsters are very well designed. So much variety in the demons, and they are all very creepy too, directly out of a horror movie. And this game's crazy too, there's so much just stuff on the screen at all times. Combined with that you're moving at such a fast pace, it is a pretty crazy game to play that never experiences any slowdown on the Switch. The graphics aren't quite as good as other versions, but the experience isn't hindered because of it. They pretty well made the best recreation of this game given the hardware that they had to work with. This is a game I think a lot of people actually would like, even if you're not all that interested in shooters. The only thing left to do to this game is make the Doom Switch Edition. What's better than one port on the Switch? three ports for the price of one. And these aren't any subpar games, no sir. This is the Bioshock Trilogy, now available in the Bioshock Collection. Okay, this is sounding way too much like an ad. Anyways, the story and atmosphere are fantastic in these games. This shows how linear gameplay can be used to its fullest extent. The stories in these games revolve around mystery. You first see these beautiful worlds and then slowly realize the corruption and secrets that these places hold. This perfectly blends the story and world building together like no other game has. That's all I really want to say about these stories because I don't even want to come close to spoiling the ending of these games because they're all great and pretty twisted. Like look, there's hour long videos of people just trying to make sense of all these plots. The gameplay is awesome too. Not only is it a shooter that has satisfying gun combat with various gun upgrades, but it has a bunch of powers that your character can use too. These are called plasmids and vigors that can make your character shoot crows and stuff out of your hand. I don't know. And they look totally not painful to use at all. If you haven't played one or any of these games, then I would highly recommend this collection. So let's try and be a bit more original here with another collection. Diablo 3 Eternal Collection to be exact. This action RPG dungeon crawler is back once again, but now on a portable system this time. And you know what, it's about time this game had a portable port, because it is really fun to play in short bursts. Maybe you want to go find a piece of loot or just grind up your character for a bit. It is the perfect game for this kind of playstyle. And they decided to include everything in this rendition with all the DLCs, characters, and quality of life improvements in the game. And now on the Switch, you can play as Ganondorf from the Zelda series. And he fits too well into this type of game. Look, he even has a Kaku following him. This game just made it really rewarding to explore all these different dungeons. You might just come across a mob of weird looking enemies that will give you some fancy loot for defeating them. And this game has some really cool and epic cutscenes which just incentivizes you to keep on exploring and progressing in the game. If you want some action packed short burst type of excitement, Diablo 3 Collection. <laughs> No intro, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, what a game. This game is just so good and I never hear anybody talk about it anymore. It was a pretty standard port in all honesty, but it was such a good game that I couldn't not talk about it. This seriously might just be my favorite 2D platformer of all time. Like, it's that good. The level design is perfection. Each level tells a story. There is always a new mechanic that is introduced in every level at the start that is slowly and naturally built upon as you progress through the stage. The stage then comes to a climax with the level mechanic fully realized and usually with an epic set piece. Then the level ends and you're on to the next awesome level which does it all over again. Literally every single tiny element was thought of in this game. Nothing was just randomly placed to fill space. And everything in the stage has a purpose. No platform or enemy is simply just floating there, but they all feel like they actually belong in the world. The platforms could just be like dancing trees or windmills. And even if there are just platforms, they give an explanation as to why they're there. They could show the wood structure holding it or even have it float from balloons. And there are so many other little details as well. These leaves aren't just floating in the wind, but are being blown from a horn by this owl in the background in his owl hut. 
Or there's this like penguin guy who's been trying to kill you the whole level in this wooden mech. And when you finally kill him, you realize he actually escaped his machine, but he gets a little karma when this plant hits him in the background. There are so many little details like that throughout the entire game. If you haven't played this game, you'd 100% love it. You just don't know it yet. I gotta move on from this segment or I'll just be talking about this for way too long. <clears throat> Dear video game companies, this is how you do a port. Take the original game, include all of the DLC in it, fix one of the only problems people had with it, and then just add some stuff that weren't even in the original game too, like new characters and double items. That is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for you. If you're looking for a Mario Kart with a lot of content, then this is your guy. Game. Game. This is your game. There's a lot to love about Mario Kart in general, but for this game, I really liked the tracks. They used a lot of interesting mechanics and new track layouts that made for some great new tracks to drive on. And this time, there's a new anti-gravity mechanic, which was, uh, a thing, I guess. But they used this really well to spice up the old tracks so they would feel more like the new ones. The original Mario Circuit may have felt a bit too flat back then, but now just prop that track up and you're good to go. There are so many minor details on these tracks as well, that are so easy to not even notice. You know that track where you're in the clouds and on a beanstalk for a short section? Well if you look where that sprout is coming from, you'll actually see that it starts from a question block, which is exactly like the games. Pretty neat detail for a pretty neat game. Ugh, did I really just end the segment like that? Okay, and now it's time to get a bit more deep in this last segment. Because I've been thinking, there are only three things in this world that are truly timeless. Love, happiness, and ports of Skyrim! Because this thing gets ported like every year to something. And this is like the last Elder Scrolls game we've seen since 2011. Come on guys, enough with the porting and more of the, like, making new games and stuff. But even with all that being said, there's a reason why this game has so many versions. Skyrim is some of the most fun I've had in an open world game. So, so, so much stuff to do. Mix potions, kill a dragon, kill some random people, or even just play basketball. Many times I would just get lost and distracted from the main story and just kind of wander in this gorgeous and imaginative world. The exploration was so much fun in this game. You never knew what you'd stumble upon. Also, to complement this aspect, there were so many unique and distinct areas in the game. There there's the top of the highest mountain in the world, or a neat town with rivers running through it. You could travel through this lush forest to, I don't know, maybe find a horse or something, or go to the Arctic where there's this hermit living in his igloo. Now, did this game do that much as a port? Not really, but I don't know, it's just so cool to have this massive world with all of its features that could take hundreds of hours to complete, all at your fingertips on a portable system. Also, guys, I want to start getting more involved with the people who watch my videos. So right now, you can actually go vote for a video you want to see me make on my Twitter page. A link for that poll is in the description, so go check it out because I want to start using my Twitter a lot more. And maybe while you're there, you know, just you can follow me. Don't worry, I won't find it creepy. I just want to hear your input as to what videos you want to see me make. But anyways, those were my favorite Switch ports. Did you agree with me? No. Did you disagree with me? Probably. But either way, that is the end of the video. See you guys next week. Yeah, that's a good ending, right? Yeah.